Hey, how's it going? My name is Athavan and I'm a second year biomedical engineering student studying at the University of Waterloo. I've just finished my first term of my second year recently. Today, I'll be talking about my experience going through the first half of my second year. Also, if you wanna learn more about my first year, you can check out my other videos on my channel. Waterloo is known to be a competitive engineering environment, specifically for tier one engineering programs such as software and biomedical engineering. Just like a lot of other engineering students, I had to deal with a large load of subjects. More specifically, I had to take seven courses this term, which included two lab courses. Second year compared to first year had a lot of challenges for me to overcome. Some were similar challenges that I had to face during first year, while others were new challenges that I had to overcome. I tend to have a harder time getting through my academics, but I was still able to maintain my overall GPA by the end of the term. I'm also gonna talk about things such as my first ever hackathon, some things that I learned during my co-op search and much more things. So more specifically, I'm gonna divide all of my talking into three specific categories, lifestyle, co-op and academics. Hopefully you can get something from what I've done or what I've learned throughout my 2A term. And with that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So the first thing I wanna talk about is being on campus for the first time at the University of Waterloo. So during my first year, I was strictly at home doing online classes, which although it did have its own benefits, was sort of a bummer for me because I never really got to socialize that much with my BME friends outside of using a platform called Discord. You might've heard of it. However, during this semester, a lot of things started to change for me. For starters, during the weekdays, I would reside at an apartment near campus with other people, a few of whom who have already been friends with since high school and a few of whom who I've met for the first time. Just the overall feeling of just living with other roommates was a nice feeling and the transition of living away from home was nothing new to me as I've already been away from home uh, through multiple events and programs such as Shad Canada. By the way, if you want to learn more about Shad Canada, I have something that's linked in the description below. It's a video just talking about the program itself. It's really nice. However, being away from home during school also made me feel more responsible for what I'm doing during school and how I use up my own time, as I had to take into account a lot of things, such as going to classes on time, getting my own food, just getting enough sleep, and also being able to manage all of my courses that I was handling during the term. Now, when it came to going to classes, this is where I got to meet a lot of my BME friends that I met through Discord in person for the first time, which was honestly an awesome feeling, knowing that first year was strictly online and I finally got to meet a lot of my friends in second year in person. The schedule for this term was split into online classes and in-person classes, which were put on certain days, like separate days. I also got to experience being in a classroom in our school's engineering building, as I tried very hard to write as many notes as I can while the professor talked about whatever lecture they were talking about which was a new experience for me, knowing that first year I had to write everything on my own time, second year it had to be on the professor's time, which was a new experience for me. Also, I would sometimes study around different places around campus, such as the library, which was dead quiet, so I was able to get a lot of work done. And it was also cool to sometimes study with other people, such as my roommates or my BME friends, since I didn't feel as lonely studying compared to first year where I was basically all alone studying. So for getting food, I was fortunate enough to get a lot of packed meals for my family, but I still sometimes had to get food outside on my own terms. So near the university campus, there are a lot of different restaurants that you can choose from and try out, ranging from kebabs, fried chicken, burritos, or just your typical fast food places like Subway. I tried going to as many different places as I could to try out different foods and see what I liked, which for the most part was almost everything because I'm not much of a picky eater to begin with. Some of my favorite places to get food from around campus include Lizzie's, Baba Grill, and Harvey's because sometimes I really like common fast food. So in terms of socializing, even though I was on campus for the first time, I tended to stay at home during the weekends when I didn't have to be on campus to attend lectures. Every once in a while though, I got to hang out with my roommates or my BME friends when I had the chance, which was really fun to be a part of. If you want to learn more about the social life on campus, I am not the best guy to talk about the social life at Waterloo, to be honest, since I was mostly studying in my room, worrying about my academics. But overall, there was more time to socialize this term compared to that of first year. 
I also felt like I didn't make as much effort to use a lot of opportunities to go and look around campus. More specifically, I felt like I could have tried going to the gym and working out, but I never found the time to start putting in that work because I was just so focused on doing well in school, just like I did in first year. That's something I wish I can try improving upon when my next study term comes around this spring, which is to balance my academics as well as my own physical health during one term. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about my co-op search as well as my first hackathon. During the 2A term, I had to search for a second co-op internship after my first co-op internship working as a data analyst for Jana Corporation ended by the end of the summer. So to prepare myself to get a new co-op internship, I did a few things to prepare myself. One such thing was participating in my first ever hackathon, which in this case was called Hack the North with a few of my other roommates so I could try adding a specific project to my already created resume. Doing a hackathon was a bit scary for me because I had no experience in designing something with outside equipment outside of school. The hackathon itself occurred during a Friday night to a Sunday morning, which was extremely grueling to just get all of that work done to create our final product. So what our group developed was a smart water bottle called Aquamate which was, again, a smart water bottle, which contained a little sensor that measured the amount of water you drink on a daily basis. And that data is sent to a phone application, which provides the user visually engaging data on how much water you drink on a regular basis. If you wanna learn more about our project, there should be a link in the description that shows a little bit more about what our project became. So in addition to make my resume look more professional, I got a lot of peer edits from upper year students so I can ensure that my resume looks very professional in front of future employers. I would highly recommend this when creating a resume as peer edits can give you a lot of good feedback on how your resume can be improved overall. So with my improved resume and my gained work experience from last summer, I was able to get a lot more interviews compared to that of first year. However, looking back at my co-op search, I feel like I made one mistake in terms of my preparation involving the co-op search, which involved coding interviews. So usually if you're applying to a position that's connected to engineering, a coding portion will be involved in your full interview. In my first year, I only had got to do one interview, but in which there were only behavioral questions that were asked, no coding interview was needed. However, during this term, all of my interviews had a coding portion in the interview, which I barely studied for. All I did was rush to this coding website called LeetCode, and I tried doing the easiest problems possible on their website. I honestly should have prepared more before the term began, but the only thing was that I really relaxed a lot during the summer, since this was probably the first time since the pandemic that I got to go outside more often, and it honestly just made me forget all about the coding interview uh, until the term began. And this actually leads to kind of a funny story that I kind of have. I was only able to complete and understand one specific problem on Lead Code, which by the way, from what I've heard, is a really great place to practice coding questions for coding portions for interviews. And the funny part about that whole situation was that that one question that I prepared on Lead Code was that one coding question that appeared in one of my coding interviews, which was honestly the weirdest feeling that I ever experienced. And I eventually got that position after going through that specific coding interview, which blew my mind. So what I'm trying to get through my weird story is that to prepare for these coding interviews associated with software engineering internships, for example, practicing these coding questions on platforms such as LeetCode will help tremendously. And I mean, tremendously. Please don't do what I did and hope that the one question you prepare for will end up on a coding interview. That's just pure luck. Trying out a large amount of coding questions on platforms such as LeetCode or other coding platforms will honestly help you a lot more and will help you a lot in succeeding with these coding interviews. Another thing that I realized that I could have improved upon before I started going through these interviews was to try asking at least one question to the employer when I get the chance to. This will show the employer that you have an interest in the employer itself and the position and will show to the employer that you want to be a part of their company. So overall, this sums up my co-op search. I am set to become a quality engineer for ADP Canada starting this January. And there's going to be a lot of new applications that I need to work with, such as Gradle and Maven, which is something I'm interested in looking at. So overall, I am really excited to starting this new internship starting this winter.
So before I talk about what I studied in 2A, I just wanna talk about the classes that I attended and how they were much more difficult compared to that of first year. Not only because of the content, but because I had to maintain studying for seven different courses, which is something that was brand new to me as a university student. And on top of that, I had a lot on my plate ranging from doing extracurriculars to stuff I said earlier in the video, such as participating in the hackathon or just working on my co-op search. So the seven courses that I took this semester included Calculus 3, Physics 2 Dynamics, Material Science for Biomedical Engineers, Engineering Biology, and Mechanics of the Formable Solids, or MODS for short, in which the last two courses have a separate lab component that counts for two extra courses, totaling the seven courses that I had to do throughout the term. So at the beginning of the semester, there were only six courses that we had to work on, as there was one lab course that decided to come after midterms, in which we started working on. However, after midterms, that's when I became completely stressed on all my academics as handling seven separate courses became too much for me and it was sort of a challenge for me to overcome. So to start off uh, with all my classes, Calculus 3 was another extension of what I've learned from previous calculus courses. The main concepts that you tend to learn include vector fields and differential equations and the different types of applications that associate with these particular concepts. So to do this course, you primarily need your knowledge from previous university calculus courses, particularly Calculus 1 and Calculus 2. Most of the concepts though are fairly easy to understand, aside from vector fields that might take a little bit more time to understand in my opinion, but as long as you have a fair understanding of calculus knowledge, you should be okay with this course and this course overall shouldn't be too much of a hassle. So the next course I'll be talking about is Physics 2 Dynamics, which is actually the second university course that I took involving physics, the first one being statics in my first year. So in this course, I actually learned a lot about the different concepts that I previously learned in high school, such as kinematics and kinetics, which is connected to forces and the conservation of energy only at a university level. I also learned about the importance of rigid bodies, which have a defined mass, size, and shape such that they're able to rotate and they tend to cause a moment. So this course was relatively less stressful compared to that of other courses that I took this semester. And in my opinion, it was a lot easier compared to that of the first year statics course that I took in university. So I was fairly comfortable with my knowledge involving kinematics and kinetics. So hence, it wasn't really difficult for me to get through most of the deliverables, ranging from the quizzes, the assignments, and the lab that we had to do. Overall, having that physics knowledge that you got from high school involving kinematics and kinetics will really help with this dynamics course. Then there is material science in biomedical engineering. So this course was really frustrating to go through in my opinion, and it didn't have anything to do with the actual content itself. It was The content itself was fine. In this class, we learned a lot about different topics such as the importance of different crystal structures, polymers, the importance of electrochemistry and more. All these concepts are essential for engineers who would like to learn how to use the correct materials in order to build certain structures. The most difficult part for me was doing the different assignments and quizzes that were assigned to us during the course, simply because it was hard for me to figure out how to efficiently study all the content for each quiz. So the quizzes for me were extremely difficult such that whenever I answered a question, it was sort of like Ben Simmons shooting a free throw, just simply hope and pray that it works. And not to mention that these quizzes occurred at 8.30 a.m. in the morning for all four of our quizzes, which was kind of a bummer because I usually don't like waking up as early as that in the morning to do a quiz. Not to mention, we had to maintain a 50% average for all the quizzes that we took, which did give me a bit of a scare whenever I tried studying for these quizzes. There were also a lot of assignments that we had to do such that the class had to buy certain equipment outside of school in order to run these certain experiments, which took longer than I expected for me. But there are a lot of assignments and tutorials which allowed me to boost my grade up, which made up for my subpar quiz grades. Honestly, I'm just glad I finished the course by the end of the, the term. Sorry if I really kind of scared you with this course, but this was honestly the first university course that I took so far in which the fear of failure really, and I mean really got to me. Okay, so moving away from material science, now let's talk about engineering biology. So this main biology course particularly consisted of high school biology content with some extra topics that go deeper into teaching you more about biology in general. However, unlike a course such as chemistry or physics, 
I never took biology in high school, particularly grade 12 biology. So I had a really hard time going through this course and I didn't really do a good job of preparing myself before the term started. I was really enjoying my summer throughout my co-op term and I really forgot to just look at my biology notes that my friend actually provided to me, which kind of stunk because their notes were actually really good. And in all honesty, if you took biology in grade 12 or you have a fair good knowledge of biology itself, you'll probably do much better in this course compared to me and this course shouldn't be that much of a hassle. There was also a biology lab course that had a fair share of experiments that were connected to the topics that we actually learned in our engineering biology course, which included things such as macromolecules, enzymes, osmosis, and more. The best part about this course is that it was all online, meaning that all the details of the different experiments were provided to us in order to help us write our own lab reports. Not to mention there were also online sessions where our TAs or teaching assistants gave us a thorough explanation of each experiment and how they worked, which helped us a lot with our lab reports. So the last course I'm going to be talking about is mechanics of the formable solids or mods for short. This is another physics-based course where we learned about the mechanical behavior of materials when subjected to things such as stress or strain, as well as when a material would break or fail. So I'm not gonna lie to you, there was a lot of content to learn in this course, but thankfully the professor in this class was very beneficial by using a pool noodle to visually represent all the different concepts that we learned, such as stress or bending moments and more. There was also a mods lab course, which was very different compared to that of our engineering biology lab course. For starters, we worked in groups of five compared to working individually. And in addition, we also got to go on campus and go to an actual lab site where we actually got to work on our labs and get our lab results. As soon as we got our results, we had to write up our lab report, which for the most part took until a few hours before the deadline because, well, procrastination and stuff. It was really cool to just do in-person labs even during a pandemic and I was really glad these were done in groups because I really don't think I would have been able to do these lab reports by myself and being in a group environment really helped with finishing these lab reports. So overall these subjects were a lot more difficult compared to that of first year and it really kind of opened my eyes of how difficult university is going to become and it's not going to get any easier as I move further into my university degree. And that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching until the end. I hope you gained some insight about my experiences that I gained through my two-way term at Waterloo. Once again, if you want to learn more about my first year experiences, I should have them in my channel, but I'll also link them in the description below for you to see. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and have an awesome day. Peace.